Good afternoon, Pastor David. Hey, John. Welcome, everybody, uh, to A Random Moment with Pastor Dave Unfiltered, and thank you guys for tuning in with us. Pastor, today I want to talk about something that uh, I wanted to ask you about to see. Is this something that has been progressing over the years as you've been ministering, leading the church for, I mean, Bible studies and everything, close to 50 years, right, uh, all together? Closing in. And, uh, and something that uh, even being a part of ministry is I see is division in the church. And wanted to get your feedback on on uh, on division that there's gossip. There, uh, the, the, the list is long. But you know, I'm reading in John chapter 13 when Jesus is gonna wash his disciples' feet. What he does is says he removes his garment and then he gets the, he girds himself and with the towel and he begins to wash his disciples' feet. I'm thinking about the disciples. I've been thinking there's a zealot there, a tax collector, uh, one that's going to betray, one that openly speaks out, uh, different personalities, different things going on. But yet Jesus loved them so much that he did this act of service for them. And I've seen that instead of washing people's feet within the church, not on a physical thing, because I don't know if I wash anybody's feet, but we do a good job of cutting off people's feet. And I wanted to ask you, is this something within the church that has progressed or has it always been there? Well, it obviously has been there from the beginning because you see it in John 13. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> so it's been there from the beginning. Jesus needed to teach the, uh, the apostles what it means to be his follower. And within the confines of those who profess to know Christ, to love him and all of that, there will always be people of the sorts that are mentioned amongst the, uh, the apostles, a variety of men, including a betrayer. Because within the confines of those who profess to be followers of Christ, there have always been those who are more like Judas than anybody else. You know, when Jesus wants to teach them the lesson of, of uh, servanthood and of unity, that which is going to bring them together, he doesn't speak to them about that which is the greatest thing in terms of like uh, sitting on his right hand or on mm. his left as James and John so vociferously requested through their mom. But he says that the greatest image of the one who is his follower will be the one who uh, is the servant, the one who washes feet. So many of the commentators from the ancient days on have considered the removal of his outer garment, as the scripture says, and then girding himself with that towel as a picture of his humiliation and his incarnation. That's what he's doing. He's divesting the appearance and demonstrating a new one. He's divesting the appearance of the teacher, the master, the leader, and in the putting on of the, the towel around his waist, he's demonstrating servanthood, and then he illustrates that but, excuse me, in his teaching by saying, you call me master and Lord, and you say, well, for that is what I am. But he goes on to say, but if I then, being your Lord and master, have washed your feet, you need to wash the feet of one another. Once again, addressing that constant argument that the, the disciples, even unto that night, had continued in, because in the other Gospels we see that Jesus once again addresses their argument as to who is the greatest. And so within the confines of their argument, there's that picture of what servanthood actually is. So how many churches have you ever heard, ever heard, uh, that had a division because people were fighting amongst themselves as to who was the best servant? You never hear that. What you hear in church divisions and problems is who is the better. It's the, I am a greater, even, even the attitude of I am more important in the church than you. That's why Jesus would, would teach us so often and so clearly, the greatest in the kingdom is the servant of all. You know, and so I believe that the heart of division very often is uh, going to center on things like who is the best, who is the most important whose opinion matters most, whose influence is greatest. It's going to be things like that mm -hmm. rather than concentrating on just caring for those who are in need and ministering to those who, who need to have a, a, a well-placed word at that moment to encourage their lives. And so, yeah, when Jesus was washing their feet, he said that this is an example unto you. What I have done 
you're to do also. And the scriptures, there are only two verses that I am familiar with that speak concerning Christ being used as an example. And one of those is the example of being a servant. I've done this as an example unto you. The other one is he's an example of the one who suffered for us. So suffering and serving are the two scriptures, one by the Apostle Peter in one of his letters, First Peter, I believe, and the second one being in John 13, where he speaks concerning the fact that he had done this as an example. He said, you know, uh, you call me Master and Lord, that's good, but you need to do as I have done. And you don't see any competitive spirit within that, not trying to be better than the other. Simply, he laid his garment aside. And, uh, you know, I take that in consideration because I read a book a while back called The Accidental Pharisee. And in, and in, 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 in trying to live a righteous life, sometimes we can become self-righteous. And instead of washing the other people's feet, sometimes we can cut them off, uh, even within ministry, within circles of friends, within. And it's really not the message Jesus gave. And uh, and so that was something I was going through my devotions this morning. I wanted your feedback on that. And, and you're right. It's been going on since here. But I didn't remember that the arguments that were leading up to yeah. that evening yeah. was about who's going to be the greatest. Who's the greatest. That was a constant argument. It continued on. We begin seeing it reported first in Ma Matthew 16 after Jesus had uh, had um, pronounced the blessing of Simon on Simon at Caesarea Philippi, mm. and then it seems to have escalated from there. You know, later on you're seeing James and John and Salome coming and requesting positions of honor, and then you continue seeing that even to the day that Jesus. Uh, had been betrayed at that and, and bringing it up there at the Last Supper. So that's a constant thing. Here's the thing that, that I can close with, with an encouragement to those who are listening. It would be very simply put, it would be Jesus said, if you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. Mm. See, the problem I've had uh, in my own life as well as as a minister to those who are struggling has always been, it's not that I don't know, it's that I don't do. And so I, I have, you know, had pastoral counseling where I'm speaking to somebody and I'm pointing something in scripture. And I, I can't tell you, especially in the early days, how often I would hear someone say, I already know that. I already know that. So I, it, it's so often and so common, I finally said, you know, well, like Jesus said, if you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. It's not enough that you know or you can quote or you have these ideas of, but are you doing those things? And that's the difference between, again, the Greek way of thinking, which is an accumulation of information gives you knowledge versus the Jewish way of thinking, which is uh, knowledge is actually putting into practice the things that you've accumulated informationally. And so there's a difference, you know, know these things, blessed are you if you do them. And Christian, if you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. Well, thank you, Pastor David, for sharing that. You know, you would think as these men were spending and got closer to Jesus that they would become uh, uh, more like him, but instead, uh, the, you know, the self-righteousness that can It requires them. the Holy Spirit. Right, yes. They had yet to be baptized in the power of the Holy Spirit, and that is where a lot of Christians seem to be lacking, John. It's that they're not walking in the power of the Holy Spirit. If you walk in the Spirit, you don't fulfill the desires of the flesh, and so... It is that constant filling, that constant walking, it's that seeking of the power of the Holy Spirit and then combining the power God gives you with the information in his word, the words of life that he gives to you, that gives you the ability to live a life that is pleasing to him and filled with the joy of the Spirit. So the, the, the church today is forgetting. That's why we're trying to do so many things in our own power by our marches and our votes and our loud voices and our anger. And we're forgetting the, the spiritual qualities that Christ has called us to. Not to say that we shouldn't do those kinds of things, but the motivation, power behind that, the reasons for all those things is because of the Word of God and, and the, the desire to do that which pleases Him, which is uh, part of what the Holy Spirit encourages us to. Amen. Well, thank you, Pastor David, for sharing with us and, and that we may keep our eyes on Jesus and be constantly filled by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And uh, we do want to invite you guys to come out and join us on Sunday morning at 8.30 and 10.45 a.m. Uh, invite your friends and family to come out. Uh, Friday night, we have our men's barbecue. Amen. If you didn't get a ticket to eat, you can come at 7.30 for 
uh, a devotion, worship. We have Holland Davis coming up doing worship. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to have a devotion and a testimony. A brother's going to share a testimony. And then we're going to have some more worship. So guys, come on out. We look forward to having you guys join us. And Pastor, again, thank you so much for your time. Thank you guys for tuning in, and God bless you.